This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me. Tallahassee, what a beautiful day to wake up. You are at 94.1 Wave 94, Escape to Heaven with Servant Marcia, Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. And today, I want to speak to those that believe that you are the remnant And my question is, do you know your role, your responsibilities? And what about your future? And do you know that in your future, there is royalty? Because we're going to reign with Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody? Uh, There is a moment spoken of in Revelations that we're all running to right now today. Often we think of ourselves as just a small group that we are the holy ones on the planet. But it's more than that. You're not only living a holy lifestyle and, and putting righteousness as your priority and spending time with the Lord, but... God looks at you as those that he's trusting to expand his kingdom on earth now and to reign with his son during the millennium, those 1,000 years. We talked about last week how Jesus in Revelation uh, 1 has made us Royal. He's made us kings and priests unto God and his father. We spoke about that, how Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood. And so I want to just do like David did over in First Chronicles 29th chapter. I just happened to turn to that and I read it. It's like, oh my God, I got to say this today to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God. Of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all, both riches and honor. Come from you, Father, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. How many times have I personally fast in the strength that God gives us? Amen. So now, therefore, our God, we thank you. We praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are the remnant and who are the saints of God and the believers and your children that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you, O oh my father and of your own. We have given you for we are aliens. Hello, somebody and pilgrims before you as we're all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. So, Father, this house, so now I'm going to talk my way. This house, which is my tabernacle, your house, which is your tabernacle, we offer it to the Lord. Amen. We allow God to build his house in this tabernacle. Amen. For your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. Amen. I thank the Lord for David actually saying those words in front of the congregation and he ended it with now bless the Lord your God. So Jesus, God's son, his only begotten son has made us righteous 
unto the Father. Amen. So first Colossians first chapter says, you know, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you to desire that you be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we must be worthy to carry the Holy Spirit, to walk in kingship and priesthood. We have to be worthy so that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So our, our lifestyle should produce good fruit. Amen. Our, um, our time with the Lord, we should allocate time daily to increase in the knowledge of God. We would be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, with all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness. So we give thanks unto the Father, <clears throat> which has made us um, able or meet. He's made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So our father God has done enormously impossible things to make sure that you believer, you remnant, that you who were once Gentile without covenant with God has now been made able to participate and be a covenant member and, and be a part of the inheritance of the saints. And the saints naturally were of the lineage of Abraham. But God has done incredible things to ensure that you by faith would also have an inheritance in God himself. First Colossians, the second chapter, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. So rooted and built up in Jesus, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So saints of God, we are to beware, guard your thoughts. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, and after the ways of this world, and not after Christ. Because in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, boldly, bodily. And we are complete in Christ. He is the head of all principality and power. And whom also we are circumcised, okay? And not with the circumcision made with hands, as the Israelites do. But we are circumcised in, in the realm of the spirit by Christ. So we're buried with Christ in baptism, but then we're risen with Christ through the faith of the operation of God's power who has raised Jesus from the dead. So you and I, we're, we're being dead in our sins and the uncircumcision of our flesh. We've been quickened together with Jesus and we've been forgiven all our trespasses. Uh, the, you know, there are ordinances, you know, the Ten Commandments and other principles that God gave Moses. And those things would testify against you and I for all that sinful behavior and thoughts that we've done. But once we're in Christ Jesus, amen. First Colossians, the second chapter, 14th verse says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that wars against us, which was contrary to us. And God, you know, by us being in Jesus, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So that's what Jesus did as he was on the cross. He, he forever gave us the ability by being in him 
that the commandments and the statutes that are testifying against us would not have any power because we're in Jesus by faith. And he nailed it to his cross. And then when he got off that cross spiritually and went down to under the earth, he spalled the principalities and powers, made a show of them openly triumphing over them in the fact that he is over them. They are under him. In the old days, when a king would take over a nation, he would literally strip the royalties of their clothing and have them walk, not not the front part, but their back parts were open for all to see. And that's how he would uh, completely humiliate the power that was in authority before that king took over. And Jesus did the same thing. Once he conquered sin by his crucifixion and then him going down under the earth and, and, and releasing the saints and taking them to paradise, complete victory. That's what Jesus did. He openly triumphant over them. So for you and I, in First Colossians third chapter, if ye then be risen with Christ, we are to seek those things which are above, not be so caught up on earth. We know we have to live here, we have to work, transact business, take care of our children, ourselves. There are many things that we do here on earth, but we must keep our focus on things above where Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. So we're to set our affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. So in order for us to maintain that spiritual position, you know, where we are not defiled by the things of this world. First Colossians third chapter gives us some guidance. It says, lie not one to another, seeing that you've put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So your new man Because your old man is dead, okay? Your new man, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your master, then now you have put on the image of God. Because God created Jesus. (laughs) For bearing one another, forgiving one another. So if a man have a quarrel against you, we have to forgive. Why? Because Christ forgave you. And above all these things, if you want to stay walking in the spirit and you want to live heavenly bound, then you are to put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, of perfectness. So love is evidence of perfection. Hmm. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. So that way you're called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, but in kindness, right? Psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Amen. So we are to live heavenly bounded. And when we do those things that I just uh, listed, like not lying, forgiving, forbearing, putting on love, then it keeps you with your affection on things above. First Thessalonians, first chapter says, it lets us know there's only one God. Anything else is something, some being trying to emulate the one God, the creator, for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turn to God. So we are to turn to God from idols. 
And what kind of idols do we have today? Well, we still have the idols from old. We have the statues of Buddhism, Hinduism, and any kind of other ism. We have the ones that may or may not have statues, uh, voodoo, santeria, juju, uh, all kind of uh, spiritual things that are done in Africa uh, and other countries. Um, so we still have Egypt. So we still have all those kind of gods, uh, Iran, uh, Persia. Um, <laughs> we have all those gods, right? But then in this country, like America, Europe, uh, Australia, those more kind of more than type stuff, we have other gods, the idols, the idols of self, <laughs> the idols of wealth, the idols of, um, money, the idols, and we have Baal, you know, uh, being drunk, being high. We have witchcraft. We're to turn from all these idols. That's what First Thessalonians is saying. To serve the living and true God. We're to have faith in God's power and his plan. And we're to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who will deliver us from God's wrath that's going to come upon this earth. Oh. So turn today, sinners, backsliders, saints of God, remnant, priests, preachers, evangelists, all of us, turn from idolatry, you know, worshiping success, turn, you know, worshiping titles, that's in the church, turn. First Thessalonians, second chapter, truth is the lifestyle. So we are not to exhort ourselves and the things that we do. And it should not be of deceit or uncleanness or trickery. But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with gospel, with the gospel. So when we speak, we're not trying to please men, but God. Why? Because God will try our hearts to see, are we, are we, just and truthful people. So we are not to use flattering words. I was speaking to a young preacher last night, and before he could get to why he called me, he spent five minutes flattering words. I finally couldn't take it anymore. I said, sir, can you stop and let me understand why have you called me? And that's how God feels. He don't like us to try to impress people with, with words, flattering words, but instead be truthful, not, not, not a cloak of covetousness because uh, God is our witness. So we are not to seek glory of men or of others, you know, but we're to be gentle. That's what apostles are. Apostles are not haughty. Apostles are not with the spirit of you serve me. No, apostles are gentle, like a nurse. Wow, that's in the Bible. So my words to you and me, we talked about the first king of Israel, which was Saul, how initially he obeyed the Lord. He prophesied, became a different man. And there were two instances where he did not do what God asked him to do. One of them, he did without anybody telling him to do it because he wanted the people to look towards him. And so he offered sacrifice as if he was the prophet. And that's why Prophet Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. <clears throat> so you and I should not reject, do not reject the Lord as Saul did by his actions and his uh, words, because the Lord may take his Holy Spirit from you, just like he did with Saul. And then he sent an evil spirit to torment him. Wow. First Thessalonians fifth chapter says, we are the children of light. We're the children of day. We're not of the night. We're not of darkness. So if that's the case, we need to be sober minded 
And today I'm going to tell you that you need to put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed believers, remnant, saints of God to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are woke or sleep, we should live together with him. So 1 Thessalonians says, I exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. I'm listening to those words myself. And see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but always following which, what is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice, pray without ceasing, and in everything that we do, we should give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning the remnant, the believers, a lot of times you say, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. What does he want me to do? This is what he wants you to do. What I just said, you know, depart from evil and do good. <laughs> Quench not the Holy Spirit by having another spirit live in your tabernacle. So you can't have both spirits. You can't have the spirit of pride and unforgiveness and covetousness and Self, uh, success and then still want to hold on to the Holy Spirit. No, you cannot. You will quench the Holy Spirit and also despise not prophesying. So we are to be the king that Jesus has declared and, um, has made us to be. We're being trained right now because we're, we, you can see that we're in the beginning of the last days. At, at least it feels that way. So we are being trained for our effectiveness on earth in this age that we're living in and for the age which is coming, which is the millennium. And before I go any further, I want to read to you <clears throat> some of the things that uh, they're not the remnant, but they're called the two witnesses. And then we'll go back to the remnant. But in the future, there will be two witnesses. And here's what the Lord said in Revelations 11 chapter. Uh, he was telling the man of God to measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. And he said, Leave the outer court, you know, don't measure that because that's for the Gentiles and they will tread the holy city for 42 months and God will give power to his two witnesses and they will prophesy. So we just learned that we should not despise prophesies, prophecies, okay? And so these two witnesses will prophesy 1,000 260 days. Coincidentally, that's 42 months. <laughs> and these are the two olive trees and the two lamp stems standing before the God of the earth. Okay. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire <laughs> will proceed from their mouth and destroy, devour their enemies. Okay. And if anyone wants to kill them or harm them, they will be killed by that fire. And these two witnesses will have power to shut heaven. And remember, we had another prophet on earth that did the same thing. I believe it was Elijah. And so the two witnesses in the future, no rain will fall in the days of their prophecy. They will have power over waters to turn them to blood. And we know Prophet Moses did that. They will strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. And when they finish their testimony, which is for 42 months, the beasts 
that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. The beast will overcome them and will kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. I want to stop there because I can at least give some clarity at this moment. Now, where was our Lord and Savior crucified? He was crucified in Jerusalem. It's really, it's really interesting that when I just read it, it says the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So are we saying, are the, is the Bible saying that Jerusalem is spiritually Sodom and Egypt? Because that's what the Bible says. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make mercy, marry, and send gifts, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breadth of life from God will enter their bodies. They will stand on their feet. Great fear will fall on all those who saw them, and they will hear a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them go up to heaven. In that very same hour, there will be a great earth flake, and a tenth of the city will fall. In that earthquake, 7,000 people will be killed, and the rest will be afraid and give glory to the God of heaven. Now, my question is, do, do you want to be in Israel or Jerusalem at that time? I, I don't know. I don't think I would want to be there. We are to be the kings and priests that Jesus has made us and is making us to be. Revelation 28, when the devil um, was chained by the angel that bound him from heaven, cast him into the bottom, bottomless pit, shut him up and set a seal upon him so that he could deceive the earth no more. And I saw thrones, saw they were sitting upon them and they were giving judgment. And that's you and I, that's the kings and the priests. It's the souls of them that were beheaded as witness for Jesus and for the word of God. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So truly, saints of God, we are kings and priests. And uh, this is Servant Marcia from Heaven on Earth Ministries. Escape to heaven because you can. And I pray right now that God strengthen you in your walk here on earth and that you produce fruit and multiply and expand the kingdom of God and that you are a vessel that God can trust to put blessings inside so that you can give them out to others and that you bring many people to the knowledge of Christ Jesus, that they will receive him and accept him as their Lord and Savior. God bless you today. And may you walk forth and have a week of prosperity, multiplication, take dominion, and rule as ambassadors of the Creator God on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Can't wait to see you next week. God bless. Bye bye. Anybody want to see you love one?